In this video, I try beating Terraria using ice weapons only. Any weapon that produces ice and or inflicts frostburn will be allowed. Will I be able to take down the final boss Moonlord with such limited options? Will I even reach that point? Stay tuned, cause you're about to find out. So there are a few ice weapons that I can start looking for right away. The Ice Blade, Ice Boomerang, Snow Cannon, and Wand of Frosting. However, the Wand of Frosting is out of the question since it uses mana and I had only 20 to start off with, so I needed a weapon where I can spam attacks without worrying about mana or ammo. I decided on either the Ice Blade or Ice Boomerang, whichever I found first as my first weapon, but I'd spend the time finding the Snow Cannon later on as I could easily farm ammo for it from snow blocks. After chopping down trees for wood, I saw a nearby cave so I figured I could explore it for a bit and luckily I did because I found a bunch of things like the egglet, cloud in a bottle, a lot of ores, gravitation potions, magic mirror, and life crystals that got me to 200 health. I teleported back up to the surface, built a storage area, stored some of my stuff away, and continued on my task to find my very first ice weapon. I traveled all the way to the left side of the world, but was unable to find the snow biome. So back home I went, crafted the gold pickaxe, tungsten mail for some defense, and then went to the right side this time to find the snow biome. As there weren't any caves leading underground, I had to mine down myself. I found a bunch of life crystals to get to 300 health, the blizzard in a bottle, another blizzard in a bottle, that had lucky so I used that instead, and finally the ice blade which meant that I could now start killing enemies. Right below was a spider's nest and inside had a webbed chest with the web slinger hook. At this point I had 360 health so before I went back up I spent the time finding the remaining life crystals for max health. As I had mined a lot of gold, I was able to craft the gold armor set bringing me to 16 defense. Conveniently, it was night, I had a full set of armor, max health, and a weapon now so I was ready to take on my first boss, the Eye of Cthulhu. If I really wanted to guarantee defeating this boss, I could have waited until it was the next night so that I could get the full duration to fight the boss, especially with using this weapon. The rate of the ice projectiles were very slow, and going right up against the boss to melee it wasn't really an option since I would take too much damage. It became a very close call as I was brought down to 30 health and was one hit from being killed, but I clutched up, healed with a potion to defeat the boss. I drank a gravitation potion to find more accessories like the lucky horseshoe and shiny red balloon. Returning back, I built some NPC houses and then began the search for the Snowball Cannon, as this was going to be a much better weapon against bosses that I can't get close to. I was able to find it, and to my surprise, it had Deadly on it. There was also a nearby ice chest that contained Flurry Boots. Back home, I made myself over 10,000 snowballs to ensure I had enough ammo to use for a very long time. And then it became time to take on the next boss, the Brain of Cthulhu. I went to the Crimson, built a three-layered platform arena, and then broke three Crimson Hearts to summon the boss. Now this boss took quite some time, since my attacks can only hit one enemy at a time, and there were a lot of creepers. But once they were all gone, it became back to a normal pace. After defeating the brain, I had the materials needed to craft the Deathbringer pickaxe and the full set of crimson armor. I then went to the dungeon and built an arena to fight against Skeletron. 
and once night arrived, I talked to the old man to summon the boss. Not much to say here, it was a pretty standard fight. Targeted the hands first, and then the head. Now that I could explore the dungeon, I went down to open gold chests to find myself the shadow key and cobalt shield. It was now time to take on the wall of flesh, so I began mining down to hell. Once I made it down, I mined some hellstone, crafted the molten pickaxe, and then farmed goblin scouts to make the goblin battle standard to summon the goblin army. After defeating the army, I went underground, found the goblin tinkerer, bought rocky boots, the workshop and reforged my snowball cannon to get unreal. For a weapon that only had 11 damage, I needed the best of the best, especially since I'll be using this exact weapon to face off against the wall of flesh. Before I combined my accessories together, I went to the jungle and found the anklet of the wind to make lightning boots, the white horseshoe balloon, and the obsidian shield. After all that, I was finally ready to take on the boss, so I went down to hell, threw in the voodoo doll to summon it. For this fight, I had on the bone glove, as that had pierce so it could hit and go past the hungries to hit the actual boss. If I only used the snowball cannon, then there would be no chance of me beating this boss. I would eventually kill the hungries, but they would just spawn back again. It also got intense towards the end, since I didn't create any openings in the buildings, so I had to break them while fighting. After the wall of flesh had been taken down, I was now in hard mode, and the snowball cannon wasn't going to cut it anymore. So I immediately went to the snow biome and killed Ice Mimic to get the Ice Bow and Frost Brand. I reforged the bow to Deadly and the Frost Brand to Legendary. I then broke Crimson Altars to spawn the hard mode ores, mined them, and crafted the full titanium armor that brought my defense to 73. Before I took on the mechanical bosses, I wanted a better accessory, specifically for melee. And what better accessory than the Power Glove? So I went to the jungle to get Feral Claws and Titan Glove to make it. Now I needed a pair of wings, so I went to a sky island, killed wyverns for souls of flight, and then went to the hollowed to kill pixies for pixie dust to make fairy wings. I was now ready to take on the mechanical bosses. So I waited until the next night to summon the destroyer. And since the boss stage clumped up for a long time, I took advantage of this and was able to deal a lot of damage. After defeating the destroyer, I summoned the twins, and I used the ice bow for this fight since it's better for individual targets. It didn't have the ability to pierce, but it had a high attack speed.
The next night arrived, and so I summoned the last mechanical boss, Skilltron Prime. For this, I switched back to the Frost Brand, since the Ice Bow's projectiles would be hitting the boss's many arms. Now that all three mechanical bosses have been defeated, I combined the souls and the sorcerer's emblem to make the avenger emblem. With the avenger emblem, I combined that with the power glove to make the mechanical glove. With hollowed bars, I crafted the pickaxe axe, hollowed armor, and then went back to hell to get myself the magma stone to fully upgrade my mechanical glove to the fire gauntlet. Now my attacks dealt frostburn and on fire debuffs. With the pickaxe axe, I mined Chlorophyte and found the Plantera Bulb in the jungle. I then built an arena and farmed turtle shells to be able to craft turtle armor later. After completing the arena, I broke the bulb to summon the boss. After defeating Plantera, I obtained the remaining turtle shells and mined more Chlorophyte to then craft turtle armor. This set increased my defense to 87, and enemies now took double damage when they attacked me. I spent the next hour or so in the spider's nest killing Black Recluse because since it was in the ice biome, these monsters had a chance to drop the frozen key. This key is used to unlock the frozen chest in the dungeon that contained the Staff of the Frost Hydra. While I was doing this, the Amarok Yo-Yo dropped and conveniently enough, the Skeleton Merchant was nearby. So I purchased the Yo-Yo Glove, Green Counterweight, and made White String to combine them all together for the Yo-Yo Bag. It's been a while and it seemed that this area wasn't working out for me, so I decided to switch areas. I ended up getting more ice weapons such as the frost staff, but I wasn't going to use it since I was more of a melee build and a little after I got the icicle. 
The spawn rate of monsters wasn't really good here, so I moved back to the spider's nest and eventually was able to get it. So I busted my butt straight to the dungeon and opened the frozen chest for the staff. The staff summons a frost hydra that blasts enemy with a powerful ice projectile. The next boss I fought against was Golem. So I made my way into the temple, built a single platform, and then summoned the boss. Since Golem was more of a stationary boss, especially in the first phase, I used the Icicle since the projectiles stay and last for a very long time, in the same position, dealing damage over time. After defeating Golem and opening the treasure bag, I had the exact amount of beetle husks needed for the full set of beetle armor. I chose the beetle shell instead of the scale mail, just because it gave more defense and the set bonus spawns beetles around me that can reduce damage up to 45%. In order to get my very last weapon, I summoned the Frost Moon. I was only able to kill one Ice Queen, but it dropped the Blizzard Staff. Yes, this is an ice weapon, however, it wasn't what I wanted. I wanted the North Pole Spear, and I wasn't going to spend all that time to kill only one Ice Queen again. So I took my chances and searched my world to see if there was a Shimmer Pool, and thank god there was. I threw in the Blizzard Staff, converting it to the North Pole. I reforced it to Godly, and then went to the dungeon once again to take on the Lunatic Cultist. As someone with full beetle armor, I was able to tank a lot of damage from the boss, which meant I could stay in one spot and attack. This weapon specifically was really strong if attacking straight up into the air, because it causes snowflakes to fall in a more concentrated area. I then went on to destroy the four celestial pillars, starting with the solar, vortex, nebula, and finally stardust. It was now time to face against the final boss moonlord. The only way to deal consistent damage is by doing the same thing I did against the lunatic cultist, and that is to stay in a single spot to attack. But it's not going to be exactly the same method. I threw up and down. But because Moonlord follows my character, the projectiles that I shot up into the air, Moonlord would float up, hitting the snowflakes faster.
Alright, that's going to be it for the Ice Weapons Only Challenge. This challenge was definitely harder than the others I've done, since there weren't a lot of ice weapons in the game that are considered good. Like, I was stuck using the Frost brand for a really long time, since that was the best one I could have used at the time. If you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to leave a like, comment down below if you have any other mod or video ideas you want me to try out, and of course subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Peace!